Well, hello guys. In this video, which is a break from the norm, I am joined by Jason Massey from Dungeons and Randomness. Hi, Jason. Hi, how you doing? Thanks for having me. I mean, this is such an honor. And the thing about you, Jason, is every time that I've listened to your podcast and wrote, uh, you know, emailed you or whatever, even or commented on the video, you 100% take the time to send even just the, the acknowledgement back. Yeah, I, I, so, I, okay, I, I listen to stuff. I, I, I follow creators online and like, I would always want that for me. So if I had the power to do that, why not, right? Like, it just seems. I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it seems like the least I can do. You guys took the time to listen. Yeah, so, okay, let's, let's tackle the people who I'm introducing you to, right? So, Dungeons and Randomness, obviously a podcast, but fill us in on your, on your baby. Oh, my God. Uh, so, we've been doing DNR for over 10 years now. <clears throat> Uh, it is a huge sprawling world that I've created with tons of other people. There are 18 people on our cast broken up into four groups. So while the story never ends, little individual arcs, um, do, we try to give them as much closure as possible and try not to have stuff drag on too long. Uh, because unlike something like Game of Thrones, uh, a regular arc for us has, 70 80 90 episodes something like that our our first arc had 200 so we obviously didn't know this was going to keep going forever when we started uh it, it has been incredible to to both watch it grow and kind of be on the crest of that it's been really really amazing to get to do this as like my career and yeah i that's why i want to take the time to like get back to people because holy hell like you guys do not have to be as supportive as you do so this is you know yeah it's really nice to be you know Please. i'll tell you what the difference is the difference with you and all of the cast why why you're different is and it, is, it stems from the fact that you get back to people but you run the risk and, and quite openly you're like hey guys you know you're listening get back in touch and we'll each in, we'll both chip away, which is like Dungeons and Dragons, isn't it? The players and the DM. But you're like, bit, yeah. tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you do like. Now, now that is obviously always going to be a double-edged sword. And, <laughs> you know, you open yourself up and then you <clears throat> always debate. You know, and you'll say, look, guys, we've had these problems with audio and moving out. And you're always so transparent. And... If you know, if I drifted away when you changed from 5e to that other system and I'm now I'm back, but it's like I thought about you, you know, in between. It's like you as people, when you come on, on YouTube and you're like, you know, we're having a bit of a struggle, I'm I don't think yeah, I don't watch them anymore. I think, oh my god, these people, I love these people, you know, and, and it is <laughs> that's the connection, yeah, it's, it's more personal. Ah, uh, wow. That's, that's, wow. Damn. Okay. Hold on. I'm letting that sink in for a second. Wow. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> obviously. So, okay. Everyone's having a tough year. Uh, I, I think that year began in 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but 2022 has been really rough. Uh, it's been really rough on all of our friends, our family. Like we, we usually sit down to record. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I might do 14 or 15 uh sessions in a month and um some of those are with patrons some of those are are with the cast but every time i get to sit down and talk to somebody our first 40 minutes is just kind of venting and talking yeah and everyone's having a rough time like we we moved from california to new york uh to cut down on rent be close to the family we started the uh, year off by kicking Arc five, and that did not go as planned. We we thought we were going to have support from a company. Dove headfirst into a whole bunch of changes. We 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 just bit the bullet and said, okay, let's take a big risk. And sometimes that just doesn't pay off. Yeah. Uh, and we're still rebuilding because of that. And um, the first thing I think on this side is 
if I followed somebody, like I follow a YouTuber, and mm. they went from doing long form documentaries to uh, TikTok skits, I don't know if I would. <clears throat> I don't know if I would follow them the same way. And to hear yeah. that, like you were, you, I mean, to, you too. It's like Cortex isn't for me. I'm more of a D and D guy. That's mm. totally cool. I figure, well, we've lost them forever. That's how I think of stuff. Mm. So, uh, to see people come back after that, you know, I've, I, I've described it to the cast is you get to make lots of little mistakes along the way to learn. You get to make very few big mistakes because that's the stuff that'll tank you. Uh, mm. Billion dollar companies get tanked over one big mistake sometimes. So, you know, we're just trying to come back and um, just just do D and D better than we've ever done it before. I guess is the best way to put it. Well, okay. So let's take Critical Role and Dimension Twenty. Right, those are the names. Mm -hmm. That would be at the yeah. top of the tier, okay, right? But I would put sure. it to you that you're running better and more worlds than them because you're juggling four worlds. You know, Brendan sits down, he's thinking, I've got a 20 episode arc. You know, Mercer's thinking, oh yeah, I've got this one game to, which will change as it goes. You're like, oh, I've got four games to think about. You know, I, 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 I don't have all the prep time because I'm actually playing the damn game. Do you know what I mean? You are always overreaching. I think that's sometimes... You deserve everything you reach for, but you reach for a lot to give back to us. You know what I mean? Overreach, I think, is a perfect... Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm never going to succeed 100% of the time. Um, but if I'm, it, it, you know, if I'm batting 600, I figure, okay, that's pretty yeah. decent. That's okay. I'll take, I'm, I'm winning more than I'm losing, I guess is how I, I put it. <laughs> and I, um, I, I, I would kill to have the resources of like a critical or dimension mm. 20 or something like that. And, um, more power to those guys. Cause having a production team and having, you know, uh, but that 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 also comes with a ton of pressure. Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure I would hate to see the emails those guys get because I, oh, yeah. I don't know if they feel them personally, but like Mercer's probably gotten death threats and stuff like I <laughs> I mean, that comes with a whole lot of scrutiny. And we um, we started doing uh, Good Morning Faria, which is a yeah. super personal show with me and Bree, who's mm. um, for everybody out there. That's my partner in all this. We've you know, from thick and thin, we've been through a ton together. Um, and we answer super personal questions on that. We share way too much for the internet. Uh, yeah. But but I like doing that because I like, I I look at, and this is the cheesiest thing in the world. I, I, I look at listeners as friends. Like I, like, I don't, I don't always get to know you guys the same way. Um, but like, I recognize your name from emails. I, 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 I would kill to meet up with everybody. And we try to do that at Dragon Con. Mm. And there's people I've known since they were kids. And to watch <laughs> them grow up, it's it's crazy to see that. And it's, yeah. you know, I, I'd i rather have that than be huge, I think. I guess, yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, like I say, you put the most effort in. Uh, and can we, can we break down how you started Theria? What were the beginning? You must have played D&D. Previously, as a kid, whatever. What was the growth arc, or did you just no. did you discover it? No, you didn't. No, no, no. Our episode <laughs> one is me learning how to play D and D. What? That is crazy. I've That's never. Uh, so the way it started was, I did a pro wrestling podcast for years. Um, I started in two thousand nine, <clears throat> and uh, in twenty twelve, I, I I asked my friends at the time, it's like, hey, if I did all the work, if I if I ran it. If I taught you how to play, if I read all the books, I did all this. Would you guys like play a play a little D and D with me? And it started as a side project, like like before Patreon was Patreon, because uh, Patreon didn't come along till 2014, because we were like in the beta for that. So like, um, this started as uh, the podcast platform we used had like a premium thing, I think. It was super rudimentary, but we were like, well, we got to put something on that. So we'll just play some D&D &D and mess around. 
and uh, I, I, I super enjoyed it. I, I, yeah. it was like, um, it, it was like an itch I didn't know I need scratching, like that type of thing. So, <laughs> I, I started playing with everybody, and uh, they, they started digging it. It was a little awkward at first, but like we, there was one person, Rob, um, uh, Rob Wiesenhan, who actually had played uh, RPGs his entire life. So. He was the guy I would look to and it's like, hey, can we do that? He's like, I mean, you could do yes. Like, yeah, but uh, the rules might get in the way a little bit. And it's like, I'll change that. So <laughs> we we homebrewed the hell out of like 4E is where we started. And, yeah. Um, it I, I had a blast doing that. And before I knew it, it's like, okay, well, we're not sitting down to play as much as I'd like to. I'd like to start a new group and then just kind of weave that into everything. And then yeah. before you know it, I have four. Yeah, well, the, the, I think I, when I got on board was early Arc 2, and I think the intro to Arc 2 was you and Bree saying, you know what, or, or Arc 1, it was like, you know what, Arc 1's a bit, it's a bit grimy, you know, you should probably skip it, and I was like, what the, <laughs> who says don't listen to our first season? Do you know what I mean? It's like just this weirdest thing to say, but I'm so honest, and you're like, okay, cool, I can come back to it. Well, okay, and it's, I, oh man, there's a bunch of reasons we said that, and I, I, we love our first arc, but we yeah. want it to be the best listening experience. But imagine, okay, let's talk about just from a technology standpoint. Let's hmm. listen to something from 2012, before there are shore microphones, before there are mixers yeah. like involved. Before, I was using a rock band microphone when I first started. I'm <laughs> joking. A fr like I, like it, it sounds terrible i i listen to those old episodes like i would kill to re-edit all this yeah just, just start from scratch like just i didn't have adobe i didn't have i've used audacity for years just a free <laughs> audio program um so just that and then like there's language stuff there's um there's us learning the rules and i think some people kill to like have that um that close knit feeling of friends sitting around a table and mm. learning everything as you go. And then some people want the super polished, um, like Dimension 20 critical role stuff. Where it's like, no, 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 these are professional voice actors and they're yeah. all sitting there. So it's really tough to be able to please everybody that way. So we, we tell everybody, it's like, yeah, I mean, that's 200 episodes. And by the end, this is more like what we're doing now. Yeah, you've reached pinnacle for what you want. Yeah. Yeah, so I, people jumping in with episode one is thinking, it's like, is this the way it is for 200 episodes? This is terrible. How are you guys, how are these guys still around? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a tough thing. It's like, well, I guess we tell people to skip it. Or, like, if you want to, if you want to try, it's 200 episodes. Yeah. But people would be like, oh, it's brilliant. And I've read, I've never listened yet, but I, I, I've got it in the bank. You know what I mean? People are like, I love it. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it depends on where you started. But there's a ton of, um, I, I think older players uh, tend to really like that, uh, us starting out, just because it reminds them of when they started. Yeah. So it, there's a bunch of people, it's like, oh, I had a friend like Tom, I had a friend like Tyler. I don't, so mm. they, they, they kind of identify with that and, and go, oh, it's neat to listen to somebody, especially the DM, learn everything for the first time and see what they can get away with. Yeah. Okay, so let's 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 get into the the weeds of it. World building, you know, sure. I can see I consider you at the at the pinnacle, and I have, I mean, when I started only four years ago, and I jumped in at your podcast, my homebrew world when I wasn't running books for my group, okay, was basically listening to your podcast and going, I'll use that, and then. <laughs> You know, like, don't tell them to listen to the podcast, but it's it's so much easier when you've got that image, you've had that podcast in your ears, you can replay it for your players. And therefore, I'm naming cities after your cities, and then I'm, I'll read a one-shot and go, okay, that'll go over here if they go over here. So, yeah, I, I have you to thank for being the stabilizers to set me on my way. So thank you thank for you. that. I stole, I stole all your stuff. <laughs> Dude, steal. Take it. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Because, okay, one, you're not doing it professionally. Like, mm. it's just for fun. It's just for yeah. friends and stuff like that. Be our first book, when it came out, the, 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 the first few lines, it's like, hey, take all this. 
take it, yeah. use it however you want. If you want to take a single city, if you want to take a few NPCs, if you want, if you want to run the whole world, go do that. Yeah. That's what this is for. Yeah, we've never we've never really had a problem with that because it's so flattering that anybody would want to take <laughs> that stuff. I I uh, I did factory work. I come from really like blue collar place, so mm. um, I would be you know running machinery or stacking pallets and just thinking about this stuff. So thinking about someone using my stuff. Yeah, but it's so flattering that it's like, mm. well, that's awesome. Please steal. Like, please take from me. <laughs> well, if if I, my players listen to your stuff and they were like, oh wait, it's got the black hand in it. You know, it's got the fang, yeah. and it's and it's like, yeah, like and, and wait till you you hear all the scenes and encounters you had at the time. You know, back then. I, and we're gonna run it totally different ways anyway. Right? Yeah. Because mm. unless you're running it word from word, word oh, no, from no. from the show, right? Like. It's just inspiration, and who yeah. hasn't watched a movie or read a book and went, "Oh, I'm going to use that." Like sure. everyone does that, and you're you're taking the idea because it's like, okay, well, I want that premise, but I want to do something totally different. I can't wait, mm -hmm. and then you're reacting the players on top of that. So it's it, like I love the idea of there being tons of different areas, and yeah, it's it's like a little multiverse of like, well, how are you running it? How are you know mm. what what happened in your world? Where's the timeline at? I love stuff like that. Yeah, um, so world building, how, we haven't got to it. How do you start with a clean slate? Or let's say you've got all next month's games. Are they are they mm. sketched out? I mean, mm. are you winging it and then thinking, hey, that's a good idea, you know? So okay, are you talking to like like I don't have a world? I'm just starting from scratch, like just. Uh, well, I'm saying, how have you? How do you schedule your uh, this arc? Are you like George Lucas? Oh, sure. you're, right, you're writing the skeleton and thinking, okay, that's a start and a finish. We, we won't end up there, but. Well, I like to. So I like to think about it very personally from the world standpoint. So like obviously we're in year. Well, I mean, Jesus, December, we're going to take over to 2023 soon. That'll be our 11th year. So I like to think about it as, OK, what decisions were made last arc? What mm. character interactions were there? All these NPCs have lives. What are they doing? And there was a ton of big stuff last arc. And um, the the whole impetus for this one was, OK, let's go back and wrap up a bunch of stories we never got closure on. Yeah, because. That's going to happen in D&D &D just because I, the more people you talk to, the little butterfly effect things, mm -hmm. of, well, now they're going to go home and do stuff. So I like to think about it like that first, and then uh, I'll have, you know, a, a bunch of ideas that I pitch groups. So um, I made a little booklet of pitches for everybody, like story hooks. I think oh. I, I think I did like... 15 or 20 of them, something like that. <clears throat> and when we were all sitting around, this was uh, last year at some point, towards the end of the year, like Halloween, I handed these out and it's like, okay, what's everyone interested in? And then we kind of, uh, we kind of like voted on everything. And then I took that and it's like, okay, well, here's our premise. Here's the hook. And then I'm going to pollinate that with stuff along the way for you guys to make choices. Mm -hmm. And wherever we end up is where we end up. I usually don't think of an ending because that's the quickest way to disappoint myself. Yeah, uh, we're we're probably never going to get to that because it's a game of telephone anyway. It's it's mm -hmm. just never going to we're never going to translate it the same way. Yeah, are you are you uh, more excited when you've had an idea and you think, oh, this encounter or this situation will be cool, or do you get more excited when the players are like? <clears throat> Hey guys, are we gonna are we gonna go on a heist? Is that what's happening here? And and are they coming up with things? Or you know, what do you get more excited about? Your plans or their plans? I love well, okay, I love it when I pitch something and people get excited for it. Yeah. I love that. But listening to a group talk mm. means a few things. One, you've interested them. There's something in there that they they identify with or they want to like interact with. That's fantastic. I love listening to a group get invested in an idea and then all the little ups and downs that happen along the way mm. if if you wrap us wrap a, like i usually wrap an episode up by this okay i think that's a good time to stop for the night if they sure. react in a no i want to keep going way 
yes. got them. And that's, you want to keep pulling that out, like keep getting them interested in stuff. And uh, we, like we have some episodes coming up that are like peak, peak, my players are so invested in this. Yeah. That they're talking about it on Discord. There are little Discord groups for each one of it. The, they're talking about, okay, what was she? What, what should we do here? What? What? And and they're that. There's so much on the line for them that they're arguing about a specific line they should say to an NPC. And I yeah. I I love that so much. That's the drug you keep chasing. I think as a DM. I absolutely understand that. Yeah. Now that brings me to <laughs> Cat Mountain, as I will call it. Back in a previous arc, there were suddenly loads of cats, and you were like, "Hey, yes. pick, pick an envelope, guys! You know this this won't spoil the game. This what a stupid idea, Jason! You know it's like, why the hell would you say here's a bomb? What's going to completely ruin or t- change target? What what went on with the crazy ideas? Uh, that was so. Every year we do a big uh, 12 hour stream called Theriathon. And I try to play with all the groups in a live sit down. We just stream on Twitch all day. Um, and I love to do like a little theme for each one. In this one, there were tons of uh, these envelopes. And <clears throat> basically the entire thing was set up as, as wagers. Players can go, okay, <clears throat> there's like a low, medium and high version yeah a low one it's like totally low stakes a good thing can happen a bad thing might happen but it's low stakes you know um your food might go bad or you might find you know something like that the high ones are like this mountain turns into cats for somebody (laughs) like weird stuff like that and i highly underestimated the fact that i think a couple of my friends are gambling addicts Uh and I I may I, I I told him it's like I think I want to talk to you after this. It's like, are you okay? Like, do we need to talk? Like, yeah, your, your money's in savings, right? You're not running to Vegas or anything. <laughs> right? It's okay. <clears throat> but um, they went nuts with the idea, and I absolutely love tossing stuff like that in in small increments. So I'll make wagers with players. I'm like, okay, hey, hold on, where you make this roll? Hmm. let's say there's two doors in front of you you can just make the make the roll it's just a it's just a constitution save poison or something like that that's totally fine you could just do it and we'll we'll see where the chips lay or you can double down and if you save i'll give you some extra temp hit points or if you fail the poison does double damage something like that like something silly and we build off of that to see where player limits are and like just little the word randomness is in the title i love random tables mm-hmm. and stuff like that i don't want it to ruin the world and i've gone too far like cat yeah. mountain is probably a good example of too far yes. i think no gods it was like <laughs> oh, all the things i've probably planned for the gods well they're gone <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a huge one and we're just getting into that now with uh yeah. with arc five where like players are interacting with the gods now the new ones and everything's kind of it is kind of top straight. It took me a while to figure that out. Like, well, what, yeah. okay, this has got to be meaningful. Like, I want it to mean something, not just a name change or something or a personality change. So, I, I'm, I was really interested in exploring all that and seeing what players do if they have a chance to meet them and talk to them. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it because I just thought, oh, that he's created a right headache for himself there. <laughs> and that's the you know, I think that's the risk you take whenever you throw something random into the mix, right? But just, yeah. we're playing with dice. That's gonna happen anyway, a little bit. So why not? Yeah. So travel die. I mean, travel is always a goddamn issue at times. You know, you get a bit bored of it, don't you? We're playing Tomb of Annihilation and the jungle is like, oh, it's uh, it's 20 days travel. And it's like, what to the next interesting thing? So yeah. yeah. So, God, uh, travel is something I struggled with for a bit to make it interesting. Mm. Because outside of towns, it's mostly wilderness. And I think in D&D, mostly that's used for encounters, just encounters. Yeah. That's the most interesting thing that can happen is a fight. 
And while, yeah, that's a thing that can happen. I, I mean, I try to think of it like, okay, if you have ever taken a hike somewhere, like way out into the woods or something, think about all the things that can happen. Like someone slips and breaks an ankle. Someone, um, you know, you might find something really interesting that's been buried for a long time, or you mm. might find a person who's lost and needs your help. Little things like that. I, I kind of want to spice things up by just throwing a wrench into the works. It's like, hey, there's a lost kid. Like, do you have time to deal with this? Or do you, do, I, do you just leave this kid out here? You can't just do that, right? So, like, throwing things, little complications that are things that happen in real life. Uh, you know, if you need to go to the grocery store or something and something happens like, okay, I got a flat tire. I got to deal with that. I, just little things that happen. That's what makes up a journey to me yeah. is those little stories you tell. Some of the best stuff we've ever had on the show came from <clears throat> a random dice roll or just a mm. little NPC I threw in that I thought it's like, oh, that'll be a fun interaction. It's like, well, they're with us now. I'm taking them into the group and we're adopting them. Yeah, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that brings me to like NPCs, you know, like I say, we're doing Tomb of Annihilation and it's like, OK, there's the party. And now there's, you've met five red, red wizards who you've said are going to accompany you and you've already got a translator uh, and they've got all oh, these eight thugs. And you're like, oh, man, you know, you've had NPCs tag along before. But what's your sort of idea of handling mass crowds? Oh, man, big crowds are kind of tough. Because mm. I'm a big believer in NPCs are as important as the player, which definitely rubs some people out there the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, I, I think to them, NPCs are designed to facilitate players, and that's it. Um, mm. The DM is there to facilitate players to a lot of people. Uh, mm. And I'm not there to tell a story, which I think is, I, I, I think it's a hand in hand thing. We're supposed to be working together. Yeah. Just like I'm not there to fight the players, I also get a hand in shaping things. So yeah. <clears throat> when I, I, I have an NPC in a party, I'm very wary of how much they speak, how much they interact. I don't want to take agency away from players. Mm. A big group is kind of tough. So I try to avoid that whenever possible. But... If there's a big group, I try to make it feel like there's a large group party. They're yeah. gonna, like it might even be adversarial. Like there might be two groups kind of. It's like no, no, no. We're gonna do it this way. Like have them have to be diplomatic or or you know have them try to solve a problem together because. I think that's a double-edged sword within itself. Like, it's a big party now. Like, let's say you have 10 people. Yeah. That's a huge party. And you guys might be able to get a crazy amount done if you can get on the right page. And yeah. uh, if you've ever been in a group of 10, like 10 coworkers, let's say, <laughs> two or three of them might want to be party leader. And you've already got a problem before you've <laughs> ever started. So <laughs> I, just why not inject a little bit of that into D&D &D and see how players react? Yeah, I mean, my players call NPCs that they've taken on board meat shields. And it's like, oh, I see your point of view now. You know? Right. But that's it's... not how the monsters see them. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to attack the players because you're the big shiny ones. <laughs> right. Especially if you are levels above NPCs and stuff like mm. that. It's like, well, I'm going to attack the biggest threat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that one there keeps shining every once in a while and then fire comes out. Well, let's take care of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about player deaths? Because I know you've had big player, big player deaths that have, you know, emotionally impacted us listeners. Um, but do you ever think, oh, I really don't want this character to die right now? Do you know, you ever pull your punches? I, so for better or worse, I, I, I try never to pull punches ever. Mm. I don't fake dice rolls. All my dice rolls are public. Yeah. Um, I think as a DM, that's the first, especially if you're putting your campaign out there, that's yeah. the first thing that uh, a listener is going to cry foul at. Like, it's like, well, what? You just happened to roll an 18 when you need that type of thing? Yeah. Um, 
by having all that public, again, for better or worse, um, I I have killed very important player characters. Mm. My NPCs have died in the worst possible time. And <clears throat> while that is heartbreaking, it sucks every time. When a player is super invested in not just the story, but how their you know interpersonal relationships within the party, that you know they really love a character, and you make them cry. I just made a friend cry. Yeah, that feels awful. That is the polar opposite of having a tense role. If someone rolls it, the whole party goes yay. That is the polar opposite of that. Always feels yeah. terrible. But what I try to take from that is. I like to try to inject a bit of real life into D&D. It's escapism. Mm. But you're very rarely ready for someone to die. Yeah. And what that means is those stakes end up feeling real. <clears throat> and to feel those those big peaks of everybody invested in the story, everybody really rooting for these characters, and that's listeners and players, you got to get into those crappy valleys sometimes where... Yeah. Uh, you know, a big important NPC just dies. I've had a running gag on the show is I can't make a vampire that lives like I just can't. Like <clears throat> every time I've tried to build up a big like vampire boss type thing. Yeah. I said early in the world, there are three of them. All three of them died in humiliating fashion. One was wrapped in a carpet and beaten to death and peed on, literally. The carpet was soaked in urine. That's where I'm talking about. It's like, wow, that was a lot of hours I spent on that guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, just roles didn't go my way, and kind of happened. Yeah. Oh man, when I have my big bosses, it, I always roll like below five when they're trying to do something cool. It's like, yep. what is happening here? You know? It's, uh, man. It sometimes. I think sometimes parties make some sort of pact with a demon and they just <laughs> they just have dice rolls go their way and that's great for them but it's like man I'm trying to tell a story here I'd like a little tension like that's what I was thinking about with like you know fudging your rolls you're thinking look this is going to be really sucky if you have a really cool monster and you just one shot it it's like really I I'm doing my duty by giving it a cool move to then entertain you guys and then yeah. have you kill it, you know? It, sometimes I think I have to cheat. Is the word cheating, though? I'm the DM. It's like I'm there to give them a good time, you know? Some, that, that's the only time I do it, I think. There's a tightrope you walk. Mm -hmm. um, because in f all D&D, &D, there's power creep. But I find 5e to be very difficult to balance. Yeah. After like level eight. Because um Okay, uh threat rating in, in 5e is absolutely terrible. It's it's rubbish. It means nothing. It's it is a vague suggestion at best. So CR is <clears throat> You 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 might as well just be like throwing darts. I think a lot of the time. Um, so I think the the I, I think the the temptation is there early on. It's like okay, well let me fudge a couple of dice rolls to make this make this a threat. Really kind of um, <clears throat> drag this out. Make it make it feel like this bad guy's in, invincible. But you never know when you're going to roll a crit later on. Yeah. So those really tense boss fights can turn into like a one shot KO. And then you feel bad for faking a dice roll earlier on. You're like, oh, man, if I just played it straight. Yeah, it would have been fine. So I that risk is too much for me. Like, I just don't. Mm. I would just feel terrible if. If like I, I build something up. And kind of like it's like, well, let's let's just give it a little more HP or let's just give it a yeah. bit more armor <laughs> or something. I yeah. would feel terrible later on if it's like, uh oh, because there's a ton of trust that goes into 
<clears throat> playing with somebody who gets to have all their stuff behind a screen. Yeah. You're trusting them to make sure that you're, you, you would never give them an impossible situation. Mm -hmm. And you might accidentally do that by faking something, you know, later on realizing, mm -hmm. oh, wow, that was, that was too much on the fly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have players who will say quite often, oh, I aim for the eye. I'm going to blind it. And I sort of think, oh, OK, if we're playing that game, if we're playing that game, then my monster is around for 10 minutes. And then all the monsters are going to aim for your eyes that are going to be a yeah. nine monthly campaign. It's like, is that really what you want? You know, but because I don't like to say no, it's like, tell you what, if you roll over a 22 somehow, you hit it in the eye. <laughs> sure. You know, I, I have a rule. And it is very unpopular with some some old school players the players can't do anything that an npc can't not all yeah. npcs but if you're fa if you're if you know you're a uh, you know ninth level paladin or something and you're coming in and you're okay can i can i just smite this and then this like the the eye situation is a perfect example it's like yes however are you cool with something maybe in the distance doing that to you and if they mm -hmm. say no it's like, okay, then no, you can't. Because yeah. every like you're not the only people with superpowers in the world, right? Like mm -hmm. there are other people who are way more skilled than you with magic. Would you want me to use hold person on you at some point? Would you are you okay with that? Because if you are, then yes, everything's game. Let's go. Yeah. It's the same with the the old throat slit situation. It's like you you're doing a, a mm -hmm. bank of HP. Oh, well, I'm untouchable. I've got 200 HP now. I'm level whatever. It's like, yeah, but if someone comes up behind you and slits your throat, it's game over. I don't care what they are. I've got to roll a D6 damage. It's like you are dead. Yeah. You, know, you want to play in that world? I, that's a tough one, too, because, again, once you get into that power scaling thing, I think you're mm -hmm. right, but people do feel kind of invincible. A crit, all of a sudden, if you have 200 hit points, yeah. you're like, well, that's probably fine. I can take, that's what. <laughs> A, a, a sixth of my health i'm fine i don't want people to think that way like yeah. we've instituted injuries and stuff like that it's like okay that's a crit that might break an arm or like mm. a foot or something like we need to think about stuff like that so um i do use critical like rolling tables i do use <clears throat> stuff to keep it interesting yeah Be because no one should ever feel invincible mm. if there's no threat then there's no point in us playing well, you're the king of t king of tables. <laughs> you know, I, it's like when you're not playing, you just sit up at night, rolling some, making some tables for what might come up in two years. <laughs> I love that stuff. We put a ton. We put, I forget what it was. Poor Jasper. Jasper does the layout for our books. Yeah. And that poor man had to do so many table layouts. He's like, look, slow down. You got to stop. You got to <laughs> stop for this one. We're trying to ship this. We're trying to get it to print. Just please stop. And I'm like, okay, okay, we'll save it for the next book. Yeah. The sad thing is now it's the next book. We're working on that. And like, there's just yeah. tons. I love stuff like that because when I was first starting, I looked for tables everywhere for things like mm. um, a night of drinking. What could happen? Yeah. You know, whatever. Like, it's great inspiration. Like, even if you don't use everything on the table, you might see one as a prompt and go, yes. oh, that's a great idea. Let's just do that. Like that, that yeah. type of thing. I, I love stuff like that. Yeah, the, the, the randomness is, is, is fun, isn't it? And sometimes when you're sort of on the fly and, and you want to introduce something cool, if there's that horrible mind blank. Do you ever, do you ever get that where you're like, I yeah. need something? I mean, it always comes a minute later, but you can buy time and do, do, do you know, is it like, I imagine that there's some edited out parts where you're like going, just give me five minutes while I find that table that I created for this thing, you know, I did. I, I find it easier for NPCs because I try to think of them as characters themselves. So it's like, well, they mm. have motivations, they have stuff. So at the very least, I'll have something to go off of. If yeah. I have to pull something out of my head, it's usually going to be nuts. Like it's going to be like wacky <laughs> or something. So I, it's like, okay, uh, let's do this. 
yeah. if everybody if everybody reacts okay, yeah, but I everybody gets some kind of like mental block or or just mm. you know, gun to your head. You have to be good at improv, I think, to be a dungeon master in some yeah. some degree. Uh, now that, and, sorry, go on. No, oh. please, please go. Well, that that brings me to your NPCs with that you voice. I mean, you have done some sleazebag NPCs in your time, <laughs> um, but but how? What's your? Well, how do you do it so well? Obviously, you're improvising, but you also are very good at remembering the voice from week to week. It's like I would always end up reverting to my own voice and be like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about that. He had a deep voice." <laughs> It's like, oh, I'm supposed to be Cogni. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, so when I was a little kid, I loved doing voices and stuff, sound effects, mm. things like that. So that part, I, for whatever reason, that part comes naturally to me. It's, okay. it's being a scumbag is hard. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, <clears throat> playing a character that makes someone uncomfortable is kind of fun. Yeah. Like that's, you know, using a voice or using like mannerisms or something that makes someone go, ah, I hate it. It's like, that's mm -hmm. okay. Playing a character that will outright kill one of the player characters if they have the edge, if, it, you know, um, we all watch movies and stuff like that, that, that moment, the all is lost moment where uh, someone has the hero down raising a spear, they're going to put it through their heart, that type of thing. And at the last minute, someone comes in and saves them. If you're playing a character that has to pull the trigger, if they have that kind of advantage and no one can stop them, that's that's tough to do sometimes. To like mm. look another player in the eye and it's like, I have to kill you. I'm sorry. Like I have you <laughs> dead to rights. I have to be, I, I'm just playing my character is kind of what it comes down to. And I hate that sentence so much. Yeah, but <clears throat> we definitely had tons of um, tons of interactions with each other after a session that it's like I'm so sorry I did that I had yeah. to like and it's like yeah no it's it's fine it's the game it sucks I'm sad but like you know like I think I think they'd be more bummed if I didn't because then that illusions pulled off of like oh I could do anything I want I'm never gonna die yeah so yeah I, I playing a scumbag can be really yeah, well, you do you do it very well, and I can say you're not that kind of guy. But yeah, even even, you. even the women are like, "Oh, Jason, will you will you stop now?" Yeah, <laughs> I I have played really like there's a couple of really terrible characters that uh that they ended up in hell, our version of hell, and they deserved it, to totally deserved <laughs> it. Um, yeah. but yeah, it it can be. It, like every once in a while it's like i gotta say this thing i'm real sorry just like just, just, <laughs> just, just like let's all get through it together I, yeah <laughs> um right i've got a specific question about detect magic i think it is the um when people cast a detect magic and everything's got all those classes you know it's in it's whatever evocation and how the hell are you supposed to i mean two things you've got to actually know your map what everything is giving off I don't know what color it is. It's like it's a lot, and and it could run the risk of you going, oh man, you just discovered my invisible door and my wizard around the corner. It's a real game killer. How do you tackle that? I so okay. There are some spells in uh in D and D that are just nuts. So mm. in the base book, I don't know if you've ever counted, but we had to because we had to go when we changed from four e to five e. We had to go through yeah. every spell in the player's handbook. There are over 400 in the mm. base book. And they have since released like uh, Tasha's and uh, like th th there are so many addendum spells now. Yeah. I think we're up to 700 or so. Sorry, can you hear that siren? I'm, I'm really no. sorry. There's, no. okay, cool. There's going to be stuff in there that's going to break your. Mm. The way I treat stuff like that, um, the tell me the truth spells or the <laughs> just show me the thing spells. It's like, well, that kind of defeats role play, right? Like you have yeah. all these skills, you have perception, you have investigate, you have all these things. So I usually make it rely on your arcana. So let's say there's some 
Demi Lich out there that is hiding some magical virus and like they're they're looking for that. I think it's highly uh, out of character that like some ninth level wizard is going to be able to just go detect magic. Let's find it. Let's just. I don't yeah. think they're going to be able to beat like a, a CR twenty five monsters. But, but it's I, I think based on their arcana, I usually treat things like a Geiger counter. It's mm. like okay. So let's play a little game of hot or colder, and I, I we can we can kind of narrow things down from there. But yeah. I'm not going to just feed you the answer. Yeah. Same thing with like detect good and evil. Detect. We don't use alignments in our world, so I like who's beyond like Hitler. Like huh. who are we willing to put a stamp on that's like oh you're all good, you're that's all fine. evil. Like that, that, that's not how people are, and I think that's a really boring world to get into where this person's evil so that's their alignment they only make evil decisions it's like do they yeah. eat a muffin evilly in the morning <laughs> how do you do that like yeah so I, I you know i i like to treat it as it's it's like okay well i'll point you in the right direction but i'm not going to give you the answer outright I, I i think that you know that's that's going to be boring for you that reminds me of something else i stole from you when they when your guys met up with vecna and they were like, huh, he's actually not all bad. He, yeah. He's actually quite likable. And, and so I stole that. <laughs> oh, yeah, please. I, yeah. I think I, I, I love Shades of Grey for some things. Mm. And like uh, the way we're playing the gods now, they're very, um, they're almost, they're almost Greek uh, depictions. And it's like, I mean, the gods got a lot of things to worry about. They might not care about you all that much or yeah. whether you live or die or whether a thousand people live or die. If their their job is like, OK, let's keep the planet going. Yeah. So uh, it, I think I think when a lot of players sit down with a god or like they, they want an audience or something like that, they're thinking it's like, well, I'm the most important person in the world. Let's go talk to Vecna. Let's go talk to you know, mm -hmm. And they might give them an answer that's like, oh, but I'm I'm the most important person in the world. Don't you know that? Like it <laughs> I, I think it's kind of cool to like you know, face them with a situation that makes them double think or make them have to yeah. like, watch their wording. That that really reminds me of um my, my Strad. We were just talking about like M uh, players having cool spells and like NPCs, not NPCs, but bad guys, whatever, should have their spells also. So sure. I read something like Strad has telekinesis, was it? And basically, he un what's the word? unarms your player who is always swinging his one magic weapon. It's like, yeah, he's going to take that off you straight away and throw it over the balcony as soon as he sees you. And it's like, yeah. oh, that's a bit of a bad move, but so cool. Because that's what he'd do. He'd be like, thank you. You know. And I think I, there's a, again, there's a razor's edge you got to walk. Like, okay, yeah. a character like Strahd is legendary in mm. in D&D. &D. Uh, he spanned multiple systems and decades of, of storytelling. So it's like, well, I got to make this guy really cool, right? Yeah. He's got to feel a little untouchable. He's Dracula for D&D. &D. Like, we got to, yeah. you know. So I think... You with something like that, it would be like it's like okay, con save, and if you're willing or strength or something like that to, to mm -hmm. hold on to your weapon or to to resist it. But if you fail, it's like I'm not going to throw it over the balcony, but I'm going to toss it across the room. Yeah. Uh, so I hope you're good at fist fighting, or you're <laughs> going to be running for a round or two to get to the other side. You know what I mean? Like make them feel mm -hmm. a little vulnerable. Give them something that they usually don't have to think about. And yeah. I think there's tons of stuff. One of the things I miss about 4E was I think 4E did a better job of using different varieties of attacks to make a character have some sort of weakness. Mm. Like if you remember back in 4E, there were the four defenses and things like oh, that. Oh, I don't know 4E. Oh, no? Okay. <laughs> nope. so, don't, it's fine. It's very complicated. It gets mm. very layered. Um, uh, the last fight we had in Arc 1 was seven hours. <laughs> it was just a boss fight with it. it's 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 it had a lot of flaws but i liked some of the things about it mm. in 5e um you don't get into tons of things like poisons very often you don't get into 
um, attacking someone's mind versus their body or, you know what I mean? They don't do that too yeah. often. A lot of things are straightforward damage, which really does a lot to streamline combat. That's great. But it makes mm. a barbarian feel absolutely invulnerable by level 15. Like, yeah, some barbarians can fly by 14, 15. Like, they, like it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff that, like, you can do to make them feel a little, you know, slow down their movement speed or, you know, um, I, we, we have a whole thing where it's like, well, you have, like, mental hit points, too. Yeah. And you might see some stuff that just breaks you mentally, and we have to deal with that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, one last question. Sure. Because Brie obviously lives with you when she plays a game, when you, you know, take off your headphones, switch off your monitor and go sit on the couch, surely she gets a, a little bit of infamy. You know, I know my son obviously lives with me and after D&D, he might be able to ask a few extra questions about, you know, what was down that. So do you fill Brie in by accident with a little bit more information or do you go, nope? Not talking. Very early on, uh, especially when we started living together, um, she would ask a question. And if it's something, if it's an event that already passed mm. and it's like, hey, what was down that other hallway? Like, I would tell the other players that, too. So yeah. it's like, oh, it was this. Oh, you guys missed a beholder. Good for mm -hmm. you. Like something like that. I don't think I've ever filled her in in any information that something coming. Yeah. I, I don't tell my wife that. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> so I'm very tight lipped about that because it's like, no, it'll spoil it. And you'll know too yeah. much. And even if you're trying not to, you'll just, you know what I mean? You, you, you can't unknow a thing. So if I tell you a danger is coming up, you're going to want to prevent it. Well, sometimes you're so excited, aren't you? You're like, oh, when you go, oh, God, you yes. know, you, you, you sort of feel like, I can't say, but I'm going to love it when you go down there. Yeah. I, I, oh, God. There's, there's a couple of sessions coming up right now. I have mm. them this week, and it's killing me not to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get to do the thing. I've planned yeah. this for months. I can't wait. Like that type of thing. <laughs> but I usually just I, I I'll I'll tell them flat out. It's like oh, get your role play hats on because this, yeah. this is a big one. Like you need to be prepared. But I can't tell them anything more about it, and it, mm. it kills me. And then we have that hour long conversation after the thing happens, where it's like oh, guys. <laughs> Can I tell you how long I wanted to talk about it? You know, it it's, yeah. Uh, and so, so L, right? Is she, is she like? Is she okay with all the nerding out? I don't know what. I don't really know what she's into. But obviously, she's not a big part of it. She's like, guys, you've worked now. Don't talk about it on the couch. You know. It's really tough because our work doesn't stop because we live yeah. with it, right? So it's mm. it's. She's she. Elizabeth is an incredibly patient woman uh, to both put up with me <clears throat> and the fact that sometimes we're working 60, 70 hours. We don't keep track of it because it's just like, yeah, you're on. Like, yeah, we get an email that we need to deal with and it's 11 o'clock at night. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. Deal with it. So she's very, very patient. She doesn't listen to the show. So that helps a little bit. So if we got to talk about something. Yeah. I don't have to worry about spoiling anything, obviously, but we'll just tell her it's like, hey, we got to pace and talk about work for a little bit. And, and yeah. you know, she's like, yeah, that's fine. Catch up with me afterwards. It is annoying sometimes, obviously, because depending, like this year specifically, it's like we've had heavy conversations and we're, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out, it's like, okay, what do we do here? What do we, what do we, I guess we're moving 3,000 miles. Let's do yeah. that, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. So she's just as much a part of things as uh, you know as as Bri is just not she just doesn't have to worry about working on them but she's yeah, part of the she's... conversation she's part of the planning she's part of listening like sometimes you just need someone it's like hey tell me if this sounds stupid that's like that type mm -hmm. of she's, she's really good at being a sounding board yeah well that's brilliant and i'm hoping jason because of the look that you have the camera that you just got on a positive camera from actually saying yes to coming on my little channel that that the universe is going to pay you back and this will be the start next year is when dnr finally gets all the things it should have had like 10 years ago <laughs> it's going to get reward tenfold okay all we can do is keep plugging away like keep doing yeah. the thing and i again i am 
crazy flattered that you invited me on. Thank you so much. It's an absolute honor. Um, and if there's ever anything you need, let me know. I'm sure I will, and I know you'll reply. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you.